Alright guys, how's it going? Well, we've solved our Logic Pro X program not running under Monterey finally. After a lot of internet searching and stress over the last few days of going, what's happening? Um, we finally figured it out. So, my MacBook Air is fired up with Logic Pro X. I still have to do actually an update to max out the sounds in it and GarageBand on that laptop. I'll have to remember to do that next time. Uh, however, GarageBand, of course, is up and running on my late 2015 iMac because, as you know, we kept getting this error thing going on. And I even went as far as going into the OS and removing the plist file, and there's another file that has to do with Logic as well. We removed that, I even, and then reinstalled the program clean again, did all that jazz. And, I mean, seriously, this thing is not going to fire up ever under Monterey. Now, I am running uh, version 10.4.1, um, I believe it is. Um, 10.4.1 is what I'm running. And uh, it's the same version as I put on my Big Mac, except that um, I had Big Sur on here, and it was running just perfectly fine. So, you know, Monterey should not have affected it, considering it's an Apple-owned and developed program. Um, but it seems it's cut it off. It left my last version of GarageBand alone that was under Big Sur, and it runs perfectly fine as you can see. Now, fully maxed out, GarageBand uh, is giving me over 28,061 items, but part of that is due to the fact that the sounds that were installed from Logic Pro X, originally under Big Sur on this computer, because I just did the update, I didn't format and reinstall, some of those sounds are still being shared with GarageBand because Logic Pro shares with GarageBand and I guess a little bit of vice versa maybe, it's hard to say. Um, but uh, either way, I mean, between the two programs, they're both, in my opinion, professional recording software. It's just that you have a really nice mixing console that you can bring up in Logic Pro. Um, and as you grow more tracks, of course, it's going to grow as well. So if you add in more tracks, come on, create, and you add in, you know, I mean, we could sit here and add in tracks all day. Let's put a guitar track in there. Okay. Yeah, 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 we know. Just leave us alone. Okay. Now, there is going to come to a point, too, where things are going to start to compress a bit on a smaller screen. So you might want to run your Mac out to a larger screen. So let's put a drummer in there as well. Not that we need one, but let's put them in anyways. Now this is definitely messing us over a little bit right now. Um, so let's add another one. And let's see, if we go back to another vocal track, I wonder if we get our mixer back. Um, no, <laughs> we lost the mixer. Okay, let's bring the mixer up now. There we go, we got our mixer back. So now we have a lot more precise control and we get an indication of what kind of instruments or input signals are coming through. Um, so you do get a lot more precision control with the mixing console, which is nice. Okay, And it tells us underneath audio 1, audio 2, guitar, SoCal, etc, etc. Um, I like the fact that there is a boatload more sounds in Logic Pro X over GarageBand. But I also like the fact that Logic Pro will share a lot of its sounds with GarageBand. So having both on your computer is a, kind of like a double bonus. You use one or the other, etc. Um, doing the editing and stuff is very easy to do with Logic Pro. It's the same sort of thing as GarageBand, really. Um, so I really the learning curve is minimalistic on Logic Pro. Um, you know, and you've got all your instruments and stuff and whatever, right? Um, and you can go to the navigate area, go to uh, the right locator, left locator, reposition, you can mix. Uh, what I found was a little different about Logic Pro was when it came to saving the project and whatnot, but exporting as well. Um, you can export as a MIDI file. Um, when I go to export under GarageBand, um, where is it? Um, file. Well, let's put something up here. Okay. So if we go to mix, here we burn song to disc or export song to disc. 
Now in this area, of course, we get the access to uh, doing MP3, AIFF, WAVE, or AAC. We don't have those same options under Logic Pro. In fact, we don't even get MP3 uh, on Logic Pro, but the Mac will play that file regardless. Um, so it's not a big deal. Um, but uh, I find GarageBand gives us more choices for, especially for the compatibility range of things. Um, so it's kind of, um, you know, I mean, but professional recording software, which Logic Pro is said to be professional level, like the stuff they actually use in studios, um, then I can see, all right, you're, you're not going to be, you know, doing stuff out to a MP3 format generally like that, you know, and when you are doing your final mix down and going to CD, then you burn it to disc, yes, you can do that, and it plays fine as a CD. Um, but either way, I like both programs, and both programs do have like your pedal effects and stuff. I found that, so you can use the onboard uh, included um, pedals that Apple has, like the fuzz pedal, the alien pedal, and all that jazz, delay pedals, chorus, and so on. Um, you can use that stuff with your guitar or whatever instrument you plug in uh, via your uh, USB interface. But um, either way, I love Logic Pro X, and I wish it would run under Monterey, but the only way to get Logic Pro, which is the new version, um, is to actually pay $300 and run that under Monterey. So I'm kind of on the fence here. I, I want to keep Monterey on this computer because I need to learn the OS, um, especially as a technician, I need to know this OS. So I may end up just having to opt out and either make a sacrificial... <laughs> laptop happen um, which means something else will have to be turned into a gaming machine because I don't I, I don't want to use the MacBook Air I don't think it really has the true horsepower for Logic Pro X to be honest I'm gonna have to try it and see and if it works fine if it doesn't well we're gonna know that I am gonna have to make a switcheroo somehow um, with my MacBook Pro or find another Mac system of some sort be it a an iMac or a Mac Mini. Actually, a Mac Mini would be fantastic if I could find one with enough uh, horsepower in it. Because um, all I need is like a 2.5 gigahertz or 2.8 gigahertz dual core and something that'll run even El Capitan. I don't really need Big Sur for Logic Pro X. But uh, if I can use the version that I have now, that avoids me spending another $300 just to go to Logic Pro. So if you have the Monterey problem, that's why. Now, I've talked about this in another video, Open Office. It's open source. But because Apple, for some reason, has no intelligence now um, and cannot verify about malware, it won't allow us to run um, open source um, Open Office. Yet, Audacity is open source and it allows us to run it without any hitch, without a hitch. I don't get it. It's got my mind confoogled on this one. Like, this is just dumb. And this is a crummy program, really, you know, when you think about it. Um, you know, so, yeah. Anyways, um, so, give yourself a break. Stop your troubleshooting. Rip out the related plist files, which there are two of them, they're side by side, um, in your folder, in your library folder, for Logic Pro X. Ditch Logic Pro X altogether, or downgrade your Mac back to Big Sur, and then put Logic Pro X back in, and you're back up and running as normal. Okay, so you you have a couple of choices, or do what I'm going to do: keep Monterey anyway, and just you know either sacrifice a laptop that I have, or I'll buy a Mac Mini or something, and put my three hundred dollars into a computer, um, as opposed to buying a new version of software that I really don't even need. Um, you know, I do love the bells and whistles, which is the only thing that's got me going, I gotta run Logic Pro X. Um, you know, it's more fun than GarageBand, really. But GarageBand has also got its things about it, too, that I like as well. So it's kind of like, I gotta play both sides here. But anyways, that's all I got for you. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope this helped you solve your nightmare with Monterey. Um, we still have to figure out how we're going to get OpenOffice to work again. Maybe they'll have a OS 12 version released soon, hopefully, that 
Apple won't crab about. Um, but uh, otherwise, catch on the next one.